Oh shit, is this thing on? Are we live right now? Greetings, festival goers of the internet. I'm the festival finesser. Scrolling through EDM Twitter, as you guys could see, I got a little lost. And I'm sipping on my tea. But we have some tea to spill today, because there is this controversy in fucking the EDM Twitter realm that keeps coming up in my timeline. And I said, fuck it, we're going to talk about it. It's been a while since I've talked about some EDM controversy, some news, and I have a bigger message that I want to try to convey at the end of this video. So I'm not just making it to be a drama king or queen, whatever. I'm not just trying to add flame to the fire. There is a purpose to this video, so make sure you watch to the end to try and figure that out. But we're just going to go on a little rant here after the intro and talk about this Elenium playing bass nectar at his festival, Ember Shores, in Cancun this past weekend. So don't go anywhere after the intro. We're going into all the facts, my opinions, Reddit, the whole fucking everything. So let's get it. Can I get a year? I'm the festival finesser. Finesse gang, can I get a year? What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another video. We are switching gears from festival season and shows and getting into more conversations discussions debates controversies not too many because i don't want to be involved and associated with drama and edm and i'm not trying to get inboxes like yo this just happened you should talk about it yo this just happened you should talk about it because one i don't like talking about drama two i don't like stirring up the pot for drama and three a lot of this stuff is evolving and changing and like I could be talking about one thing and then it becomes totally irrelevant. So like I like to let these things kind of simmer, I guess, if you will, while you're stirring the pot, I'm going to let it simmer and wait to see what the actual outcome is and then to see if we're going to eat it or not. Does that analogy make sense? Yeah. But for those of you guys who are new here and do not know me, I'm the Festival Finesser. This is my channel, a channel that revolves around music festivals and live music going experiences with a focus and concentration on dubstep and rhythm. If you are not following me at a festival day by day, you probably follow me at a show in New York, New Jersey, Philly, Delaware, Virginia, basically anywhere I go, you guys are coming with me. And if you're not following me at a festival or show, you're sitting with me here at this desk getting life hacks, trick tips, festival reviews, lineup reviews, EDM news, controversial debates, and any other words of advice I can give to you guys to make sure you can have the best festival going experience possible so like i said today's video we're getting into this debate conversation controversy topic and these are videos like i said i hate making them but you guys enjoy them so i'm doing this for y'all and i would like to just before i go any further state that this is not a biased video this is me just going on a little rant i do not have all the facts i am not a bass nectar fan i'm not an elenium fan and i do want to just mention here that i'm making this video after i already recorded the video because i say some things that someone might find offensive or might be taken the wrong way i just want to you know give a little disclaimer that i am not discrediting any victims i am not calling your accusations allegations bullshit i talk about them a lot because bass nectar is kind of a part of this video but i just want you guys to know that i do have respect i do understand the severity of these topics and uh, you know the victims and the situation so now let's talk about what happened this past weekend at Ember Shores with Elenium. Long story short, that's how you say it, right? Yeah, long story short, my friend fucked me up staying short story long. Long story short, Elenium played a bass nectar track at his own festival, Ember Shores, his first ever destination event in Cancun, and EDM Twitter got a hold of it, and it kind of blew up in his face, and he made a statement saying that he was apologizing and didn't know that the song was... A bass nectar track and he has deleted it from his library we're going to be looking at the statements and all the official videos and stuff like that in a second but i just wanted to give you guys a brief synopsis of what was going on if you were unaware so i want to start this video by showing the clip that i'm referencing a bunch that has kind of gone viral that is you know putting a big spotlight on elenium for you know doing something that i don't think is that big of a deal and we're going to talk about why i think that so let's watch this clip of elenium playing nice and easy by bass nectar featuring rodney p at Ember Shores.
Alright, you guys get the point. I'm not going to show the whole video, but I will link the Reddit post that I'm going to be kind of citing, I guess, in the description box below. So, again, when I saw this happen, I was like, who the fuck cares? EDM Twitter is just eating this shit up. Y'all are still in COVID mode looking for anything to talk about, anything to bitch about, and just anything to keep cancel culture alive and remind y'all about all the negative shit that has happened in the past with select artists. But when I saw the statement that was posted to his... Twitter, I really started thinking, like, hmm, this doesn't add up. So let's look at the apology tweet that Elenium made. So someone made a tweet, why did Elenium play Nice and Easy by Bass Nectar at Ember Shores? Replied with the video, and then Elenium quoted the tweet and said, I apologize, guys. I honestly didn't know it was a Bass Nectar song. I'm deleting it from my library. It was insensitive of me to not pay closer attention to detail. Lesson learned. So, I give him kudos for apologizing. I give him kudos for, you know, writing his wrong, his lesson learned. You know, he made a mistake, but was it really a mistake? This is where I kind of was, like, getting into detective mode. I did some research, and, you know, I did a lot of reading on Reddit and looking at comments and reading interviews. And when I can get to my notes, we can talk about it. So, in one of these interviews... Elenium states that Bass Nectar is one of the reasons that he got into producing. Not, not one of the reasons, the sole reason. He basically saw Red Rock's Bass Nectar three-day event in Denver, and uh, it was, it was life-changing, he states. When I moved to Colorado, I had a lot more free time. And that's when I got into, like, Red Rock shows and went to Bass Nectar. Yeah, and, like, didn't that show, like, change your life oh, or something? Yeah, totally. The first thing that really got me started into, like, the whole dance music and bass music culture was the first time I went to Red Rocks to see Bass Nectar in 2011. Um, and that show was, like, for me, a really epic show. I mean, it was, like, this crazy bass music mixed with really melodic stuff, and it was awesome. It was, like, I bought Ableton the next day. Uh, and, he basically started producing because of Bass Nectar and one of the biggest and he was one of the biggest influences on his musical career and um so I find it very odd that you don't know what song you played if you are one a Bass Nectar fan and I just find it very odd that you could you know you want to say you had it mislabeled or you you know I highly doubt that Elenium had his whole festival had six sets to play and didn't really prepare for them you know I felt like you know, a DJ of that caliber would have something prepared. And I could be totally wrong. This is just me speaking my mind, going on a rant. But I feel like a DJ of that caliber wouldn't just be up there freestyling a festival of that caliber, you know, unless he's that good. I'm not saying he's not good, but I feel like to, you know, to just go up there and freestyle, have no idea what the fuck you're going to do is really hard and intimidating. But, you know, he could be he could be that talented and that good. But in the same regard, how are you not going to know the name of the song? Because you can set it up to have, you know, again, I don't know what the settings are on his shit, but mine's set up to when I scroll, I can see the artist and the, the, the title, you know, when I'm scrolling. So just in case that happens, if there's a song that is the same title, you can d differentiate it from the artist. So again, if it was a mistake, you should have stopped the song, you know, like if you like, oh, this is a, this is not a good idea. This, I don't want to play this song, you know. You could have wheeled it. I've literally heard DJs just be like, whoops, wrong song, wheel it back, and then start the proper song. Like, you know, mistakes happen, whatever. And in the video, you can kind of see him jamming out to it. You can kind of see the crowd jamming out to it. And this brings us to my next kind of topic. And it's like, was it really that big of a deal until EDM Twitter made it a big deal? And then when EDM Twitter blows up, Elenium's like, oh, fuck, I'm about to get canceled because I, you know, I was playing a song that... You know, and again, this is where I kind of want to make this video because I feel like Elenium was trying to test the waters and see what could happen, you know, if he did something like this, kind of edgy and, you know, experimental. And, uh, you know, it could very well be a bad idea, you know, because he is, quote unquote, or he being bass nectar is, quote unquote, canceled, being a big influence on him. Maybe their homies, whatever this and that. I don't know a lot about Elenium or Bass Nectar. If you guys have been following this channel, you know that those are two artists that I'm just not really interested in at all. Never understood the cult following, the fan base. I'm very, like, cultured on them, I guess. Educated. It's, it's, I don't even know if that's the right word. But, like, I know about them, their fan base, their music. I've seen them both live more than once in several, well, not several, but a few different settings. I just never really understood the hype. Not my vibe, not my crowd. I'm gonna go back and stick in my mosh pits and on with my headbangers, you know what I'm saying? But I just found it very kind of odd because, like, you didn't really see any, any uh, like, 
expressions of people being like, is he really doing this right now? Like, there's a couple times in the video where, like, someone, he says, like, I'm the bass to the Nectar or something like that, and people are like, oh, shit, like, this is a bass Nectar song. And the song that's being played is called Nice and Easy by Bass Nectar. It came out in 2020, so it's pretty, it's, pre it's like a pretty new song. And um, it has a feature, Rodney P, who does a nice little, like, rap vocal on it. And it actually is a pretty cool song. Like, I'm not even going to hit on it. Like, I, I would vibe with it. And if I didn't know it was Bass Nectar, because, like I said, I don't know. Elenium or Bass Nectar all that well, so if I, heard, if I heard Elenium drop that, I would be like, yo, shit, kind of, it's kind of a banger. Like, not a banger, but it bops, it bumps, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I, I fuck with it. And then, like, am I not gonna fuck with it because I know it's Bass Nectar? And, like, honestly, like, I don't really care, but I know I shouldn't. And that's the fucked up part. Elenium probably feels the same way because I feel like he was experimenting and testing the waters to see what could happen because he was at his own festival with his fans. He could see if the backlash was going to be real, and it kind of was to, to escalate. And for me to make a video about it, like, that is saying something. And, it's again, it's not that big of a deal. I, I feel like EDM Twitter is blowing it up more than it should be. And if, if this post was never made and it was didn't catch the, the traction that it did, no one would even be talking about it. And um, I just feel like y'all are really triggered so easily. Y'all being EDM Twitter, whoever the fuck is doing this shit, are triggered so easily and are trying to make a big deal out of everything. And it's mainly because of cancel culture. And I feel like everyone just wants a little bit of spotlight, even if it's for the wrong reason. Like, do you really want to be known as the guy that got Lenium canceled? I wouldn't. Like, what the fuck? You know? So it just really makes me think. And then, like, those same people that were probably jamming out to that set, or whatever that song are probably now seeing on ED on Twitter to, like bashing it and it's like the, the, the point of this video that I wanted to make like the general perspective is to not let EDM Twitter make your decisions and not let the internet and social media think for you and tell you what's right or wrong because yes there's a bunch of political and like all this kind of like mass like you know I guess like trend kind of stuff that like everyone's doing this or saying this or everyone's like agreeing with that and like you know have some individuality don't let everyone else tell you how to think and, you know, the same could, like, I kind of want to tell that to Elenium because I feel like Elenium knew what he was doing the whole entire time and was, like I said, experimenting, testing the waters, and it backfired on him, and then he was just playing dumb and apologized, and he's like, I'm not doing that again. So, you know, he had his experiment, his time to do it, and it failed, and, like, I honestly give him kudos to do that because, like, that took a lot of balls to do. I almost wish he rather owned up to it and said, like, yeah, I did it. I wanted to see how y'all felt on the situation, and I know, like, message received. You know, I got it. I feel like that's pretty much all I had to say. Like, this cancel culture shit is toxic, and EDM Twitter is a very bad place, honestly. It can be a good place, but, you know, a lot of the time, it is just drama, and like I said, I don't want to be associated with drama. Every time there's EDM drama, I don't want to be associated with it, and a lot of the time, it is really hearsay. Like, you, you know how much... I actually did research and, like, looked up watch videos and interviews and read comments and read personal accounts and replies and i really kind of like was trying to you know and i do this in a lot of my videos that are this these controversial videos it's not just like one side of the opinion and just getting in front of the camera and doing a rant these are actually a little bit kind of prepared i have notes in front of me and shit you know i really just think it's a it's a not even a touchy subject because like it's just not a big deal and i feel like again he was trying to do something uh experimental and, uh, you know, again, kind of feeling out the water is on his home turf in a sense. Because if you do that at a mainstream festival, that could have been way worse. Because now it's not only Millennium fans. It's the whole entire EDM community, if you will, and beyond that. Because half these people at festivals nowadays aren't even listening to EDM. They're just trying to party. Yeah, so... What do you guys think? How do you guys feel about this? Because, like, I, ho I hope I'm not coming off as a hater. Please don't do... I'm not trying to give that vibe at all. I'm just spitting facts. And, like, again, as a DJ, I know everyone DJs differently. Everyone has their own this and that. But I feel like it would be very odd for you to play a song that like and that you didn't know or you like I, I just it does it, it blows my mind to be like, ah, this song might be good. Let's play it and see if it works, you know? And then to then be like, oops, no, I played the wrong song, guys. I'm sorry didn't mean to do that if you didn't mean to do that you shouldn't have let the song play out you know like you should have be like just been like whoops like because that would have been better than this i feel like you know and that's why i feel like he wanted to do it and just you know kind of be bold and maybe maybe make a statement but like someone someone made a comment here and it was very and like I, I i made note of it because it was very nicely worded and it was very appropriate Oh, so someone said, it would have been huge for this community if he had given us some peace to know that it's okay at large to still love and play some of those tracks. And so, like, you know, I, I kind of agree. It could have been a very um, kind of pivotal point if 
he played this song and everyone was jamming to it and nobody was talking shit. But clearly, everybody is still talking shit. And that's going to be the same with Bass Nectar, Datsik, possibly 12th Planet and Trampa now, possibly Snails, you know? Like, there's always going to be those people that talk about you and remind you about those things. And, you know, it's going to be those people on EDM Twitter because people out at the shit in real life aren't talking to you about this shit no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is in the past. And it's not really a topic of conversation. It's a topic of debate and controversy and discussion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you just don't bring that up in conversation. You have a conversation about that. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. It's just like, there's so many sides to it. And again, where are the facts? Where is the evidence for all of it? And, um, no, not so much evidence can be displayed in this case of Illenium. Again, it's hearsay. And I'm just kind of speaking my mind and, you know, kind of call him bullshit i feel like he didn't know what he was doing and you know but also in the same regard as a as an icon as an influencer as someone with all this spotlight on you you have to cover your ass in all regards because you don't want edm twitter and social media bringing you down for something you didn't even really do and something that's not even a big deal you know what i'm saying like you know he played a song so what you know what i'm saying like if you don't like it then don't dance to it leave boycott it whatever the fuck don't record it but like you know you recording it it's just like it just doesn't make sense man like why do you gotta be so petty and again like not no disrespect to whoever made the video like i feel like you're making that to document this and you're like yeah you were probably the person that was like yo he's really doing this right now and like you know i might have been that person too but i don't know bass nectar or lenium like that so i just would have been in my shit jamming listening to music and that's what a lot of people i feel like we're doing there because I feel like Elenium has a lot, has a way newer fan base. He's had, he's not an OG. He hasn't been around in dubstep for that long. At least it doesn't feel like that. Again, I'm, I don't know. I'm not that, you know, invested in Elenium and his brand. But I feel like I didn't start hearing about Elenium until like 2018. Which is probably about the same time some of these people started getting into the scene. It really started blowing up and becoming mainstream. You know, like 2017, 2018. Now we're here, 2021. And, you know, everyone's still trying to trade candy with me. And I'm just like, bro... I don't really do that no more. Not to hate on it. It's just like, I grew out of that. You know, like, I had that phase. I'm not a part of that candy culture no more. I'm a part of the dubstep culture, the headband culture. And if you guys pay attention, like, those cultures don't really mix that well. Bright, beady, frilicky, frolicky glitter and dark, demonic, aggressive anger. You know, like, they just, they don't mix. They don't mix. And, like, again, not trying to be a hater. Just speaking my opinions, my intake, my insight. I've been in this shit for... I don't even know. Almost 10 years, 8 years. So, and it's been like hardcore. I fucking dove in head first. And um, that's why I'm here. Because I want to share my, insp my, not my inspiration, my education, my experience, and uh, my knowledge, both with festivals and just kind of like the scene, the culture. And um, yeah. So I think that's it, guys. That's enough rambling and ranting. Like I said, the major scope of this video is to not let the internet and social media influence you. If the internet says you're doing something wrong and you think it's right, fucking do you, bro. Unless it's something really bad. But if it's, you know, this, is it really that bad for someone to play a song at a live event? No. Did he do anything wrong to anyone else that doesn't know what happened? No. But if you're in this shit balls deep like a lot of us are, you know what happened and you see why it's a controversy and you see how the pot can get stirred. We didn't have to stir it, but we did, and now we're here, so uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys, I, r I would rather you guys unsubscribe than talk shit in the comments. So if y'all don't vibe with me after this video, hit unsubscribe, I'll not be offended, but I take more heat into your negative comments, but in the same regard, a lot of those negative comments I get, I just block you from the channel, you know what I'm saying? Like, out of sight, out of mind, y'all can call it pussy shit, but like, Y'all negative energy does not enter this bubble. You know what I'm saying? I am a ball of positive energy, and I do not try to let negativity enter my space. So, I hope you guys can take away something from this video and not just rant on Twitter and in the comments and be keyboard warriors and, uh, you know, just go out into the real world and do shit. You know what I'm saying? Half the shit you see on the internet, you wouldn't say in real life. So, think about shit like that. I'm done preaching. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm really interested to see these fucking comments, so please sound off below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any insight where you're there? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching. I love y'all. Peace.